All right, here we go. My Sebastos, I think one of the best known female black belt competitors of the last couple of years. Really been head and shoulders above the majority of the, uh, of the competition. And I would say that Brenda Larissa, the Manaus native fight, uh, fighting from Melky Galvao's jiu-jitsu competition team, I think that um, she's one of the few people who's really been able to offer Maisa Caldas a challenge, a true challenge. Yeah, she's risen to the occasion and uh, really given Maisa some tough battles. One thing I love about Maisa's game is that she really utilizes a lot of pressure passing. You know, sometimes it's, you don't see a lot of that uh, in the lighter weight classes, and she has made it a big part of her game yeah. and uses it also to dive under, to chase the back, things like that. But uh, she has amazing top game, I would say. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, she's maybe best known as like a Parambolo uh, kind of, you know, guard player, loves her inversions and stuff. But you're absolutely right. She has the top game to match. She's uh, by no means one-dimensional. And you see this, this pressure passing. She's very aggressive forward Look at her motion. Go. And there it is. She's going to score the pass right there. Was able to break free of that pant grip that was slowing her down. And Misa Bastos, in just over one minute, has managed to secure a three-point guard pass. And I would say that that was... Um, there was a, an aggression and there was an energy behind that, that that we haven't seen from her for a little while because... I think she understands the threat that Brenda Larissa poses. She understands how dangerous a, 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 you know, how difficult an opponent she can be. So she's like, I gotta make a mark on this match as soon as I can. Mice is awarded an advantage for the neon belly attempt. Finish it, finish it. There you go. No sweet points or anything like that for, for Brenda here. She has not come on top, and I think that would be considered a reversal, if anything else. Kind of hard to see with the referee in, in this angle uh, exactly what the control points that they have are. Maybe we can switch camera angles. A little unclear. Okay, back on top and. Uh, I mean, Maisa Bastos had su su such success with her guard passing earlier in this match, and I feel like once again she's aggressively breaking down Brenda Larissa's defenses rather than just hanging out and trying to technically wait for an opening. And it's very different, you know. It's um, you'll see that some people will almost sit in the guard and they'll allow somebody to get their grips, and then they'll try and counter off their movements. Quite the opposite. Brenda is basically. Um, She's trying to get her attack point, uh, you know, positions, and she's she's setting those things up. And every time she does, Mice is just like stripping the grips. She's cutting the angles. Look at that! Once again, you know, she's throwing the legs around. She's forcing inversions, forcing recoveries. Yeah, Mice is is definitely not coasting on a lead. For example, she's pushing the action here. But Brenda seems to have found a, a, her footing a little bit more in this match, firing back with some intensity here. But she's got a considerable deficit to make up at five points and an advantage for Mice Bastos currently with six minutes left. Yeah, 50-50 guard here. You see Brenda Larissa has her legs triangled around the thigh. The ankle is across the body. Uh, I see a lapel kind of floating around there. I'm wondering if we'll see her try and bring that into the mix. She does knock Maisa Bastos back. 
There you go, she'll build a base. That should be worth the two points. Yep, she gets the twos. The score's now five points to two. But my Sebastos knocks her back and... Yeah, it's, uh, it's even right now. Uh, in terms of the sweeps, back and four. Meister Bastos, seven points to two. Meister looking at this toehold here. Can be a pre uh, pretty brutal submission, actually, when figure forward. As a little extra torque can really uh, create a painful situation for the player being attacked. Oh, I like that from what Brenda Lewis has done. She's put her the outside leg, the, the hook and the shin in the back of the knee. She's trying to disengage from the 50-50. There, there she goes. She's out. And she comes up on top. That's going to be two. And she's into like a passing sequence of her own now. All right, so seven points to four. Still one advantage as well for uh, Maestro Bastos. And uh, this is the first time we've really seen Brenda Larissa kind of on top in like the open card. And we'll see what uh, or what her approach is compared to Maestro's earlier, because Maestro was very aggressive in dealing with her opponent from top. Brenda Larissa a little more hesitant. She, you can see here she's kind of hanging out in that middle ground. She's not driving forward quite as aggressively. Misa throws in the daily heave hook, inverts, doing what she does best, which is the Baron Bolo. Recently been uh, seen training a little bit at the Art of Jiu-Jitsu as well. And uh, hasn't really talked about, you know, what, what, what prompted that, that visit. But I believe that things, you know, are, are still unknown <laughs> exactly what's happening there. But Marilla Santana is in the corner. Oh, that's interesting. So even though she had her training camp at AOJ, she's still representing Unity and she still has Marilla coaching her. That's, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's interesting. So it could just be a vacation. It could be. Or just a nice little exchange of... Uh, yeah, that's the thing about the jiu-jitsu community. People are quite open to doing that. Some teams more than others. Meister trying to draw her opponent's leg into what looks like a 50-50 style position here, but a little different. She's got the foot on the hip, and the uh, outside leg is hooking underneath the thigh. Crab right from my Sebastos. Wow, that's good work there. Look at the way that she's reaching up with the hands. Oh, I like that. Grabbing the sleeve, exposing the upper body, both hooks in. She climbed her way up from the crab right. She reached up with the right hand and took the collar, fought it down. She opened up space for the hooks with the other hand, opening the arm away. And she's on the collar around the neck here. The... Uh, Grip is underneath the arm, so it's not a choking grip, but that's a very solid position to hang on to. And she's now 
boosted her points lead. So she's now 11 points to four. And Brenda Larissa actually escapes. That's incredible. She manages to spin and to turn around inside the closed guard. It looks like she's going for the Ezekiel choke from inside the closed guard chase. Hey, you got to make it happen. You're down on points with 20 seconds left. Wow. Might as well go for broke. I mean, it's not that that, work, that move doesn't work. It absolutely does. You just don't see it very often. That's... Uh, That was a huge move by Mike Sebastos there in the last minute of the match to be able to pull out that back take like that. That was really something special. Yeah, the second that Brenda Larissa released the ankle grip, boom, she was inverted, going for the crab ride. With the top of the podium. 